the 2019 multiple choice paper. Second section of the 2019 multiple choice paper. Okay, which reaction can be classified as reduction? We are looking at a whole pile, oh, sort of a little scribble there, a whole pile of organic compounds here. And um, we've got owls and owns and alkanoic acids in here. So what we've got is the question um, is if we take a primary alcohol, we could actually call it an alkanol because that's what they all are here. Okay, if we oxidize that, we get an alkanal, ronaldehyde. And then we go to an alkanoic acid. Okay, and if we have a secondary. Oh, definitely not how you spell it. Secondary. Uh, that will go to a ketone. And no further. Okay, so this is oxidation. They're asking which of these could be classified as reduction. So all I'm looking for is, can I get it to run the other way? Okay, so I'm asking for either an alkanoic acid going to an alkanol, or an alkanol going to a primary alcohol, or a ketone going to a secondary. Okay, so we've got methanol going to methanoic acid, which it's this run, so no. Okay, we've got propanol going to propanoic acid, so that's an al going to an alkanoic, that's a no. We've got butan 2 on going to butan 2 all. I like that one. Okay, and we've got propan 2 all going to propanone, which is going that way, so definitely C. Okay, question 12. Oh no, I didn't, don't think I've got it neatly on, I might have to scroll down a bit. A secondary amine has two carbon atoms directly bonded to the nitrogen atom. Which of the following is a secondary amine? Okay, so just read it carefully. Two carbon atoms directly bonded to the nitrogen atom. So then let's just go for a look. Okay, so here's my nitrogen atom. I only have one carbon attached to that one, so no. Here's my nitrogen. I have one, two. That's the right answer. Just to check. Here's my nitrogen. One, two, three. Nope. And here's my nitrogen and one. So definitely B. It's a little bit of a gift, actually. Read the question carefully, you're done. Okay, the number of moles of ions in a one mole of copper 2 phosphate is... Okay, so copper 2 means copper with a valency of 2 phosphate. Go find it in your data book. It's PO43 minus, so it has a valency of 3. Cross them over, we get Cu3, open brackets, PO4, Two. Okay, so we have three copper ions and we have two phosphate ions in there. So it gives us a total of five. That's all they were asking you to do. Okay, question 14. Which of the following gas samples has the same volume as four grams of methane? All volumes are measured at the same temperature and pressure. This is the key. Okay, at the same temperature and pressure, all gases have the same molar volume. So therefore, if I can find something with the same number of moles, they will have the same volume. So let's just do my moles of methane. Moles is mass divided by formula mass. Oh, formula mass. That's a very dodgy M. Okay, so mass is 4. Formula mass of 12 plus 4 is 16. So I am looking for something which also has a 0.25 moles. Okay, right, just run the list. Okay, N of helium, uh, one gram divided by four from the data book. Uh, so that's 0 0.25, I already have my right answer. But let's just run the check, okay. Uh, one mole, sorry, one gram of hydrogen. Remember, hydrogen is H2. Uh, so that's one divided by two, so that's 0 0.5. I think that's a trap people could fall into doing, well, no, I suppose that wouldn't work either. One divided by one, we'll just give you one. Um, moles of nitrogen, again N2, so 3.5 uh, divided by 28, that's an eighth, okay, um, and our last one is chlorine, again Cl2, so point, sorry, 35.5 divided by 71, and that's another half, okay. So definitely A. Question 15. Magnesium carbonate reacts with nitric acid. We've got an equation here. Um, 0 0.05 moles of magnesium carbonate was added to a solution containing 0 0.06 moles of nitric. Which of the following statements is true? Now, if you look at those statements there, they're asking about is it excess. So this is an excess question. So let's just 
do this, move this over so that we can actually look at it properly. Okay. Right, and we've got our magnesium nitrate and water. Oh, I'm running out of space. I'll go down this way. And carbon dioxide. <clears throat> okay, so it tells you 0 0.05 moles of magnesium carbonate were involved. Okay, so this is a 1 to 2. So that means that I would need to have 0 0.1 moles of nitric acid. I don't have that. What I have is 0 0.06. So that means this is in excess, okay? And then you can work out everything, okay? So if this is 0 0.06, that means that this will be 0 0.03, as will this, as will this, okay? So we've got our products all working from our limiting factor, okay? Right, what we also know is that I would need 0 0.03, okay? Which means since I had 0 0.05, I will have extra of 0 0.02 okay right now we just work the work the questions check 0 0.05 moles of carbon dioxide produced no nope, because I had 0 0.03 0 0.06 moles of magnesium nitrate produced no nope, 0 0.03 I can see how people would get that one if they were not paying attention to the ratio that's a two to one again okay magnesium carbonate carbonate is in excess by 0 0.02 mole yes we worked that out okay and nitric acid is in excess by that no because it's not in excess okay a, a reasonable amount of work but it's an okay question i think okay question 16 in which of the following diagrams does the dotted line represent a permanent dipole permanent dipole interaction between propanone molecules okay so for a permanent dipole to exist what i need is a difference in electronegativities the only things i have here are carbon to hydrogen and carbon to oxygen so just to, to pull that from data book, okay, carbon to hydrogen is a 2.5 to 2.2, okay, which means that in the carbon to hydrogen bonds, I have a delta minus on the carbon and I have a delta plus on the hydrogen, okay. Um, the other ones we have is a carbon to oxygen and that is a 2.5 to my oxygen at 3.5, which means in these bonds, the carbon actually has the positive on the, on the dipole and the oxygen has the minus. Okay, so for me to get an attraction, I need to go a plus to minus. I can't go plus to plus or minus to minus. So for that reason, this one cannot be right because I've got my two oxygens stuck together. They are both minus, that can't work. Same problem here. Okay, I've got two hydrogens. The two hydrogens must be the same. And then when we look here, we have the same problem, but they're asking you to have worked both bonds. So the hydrogen, remember, is a delta plus, but the carbon in the carbon to oxygen is also the delta plus, so that can't attract. However, this one would work because I've got a C double bond O, the carbon is the plus, and then on the other side with the C double bond O, the oxygen is the minus, so that will work as a attraction, okay? Okay, question 17. Iron can be produced from iron 3 oxide. The atom economy for the production of iron is, so this is straight out date book, okay? So we've got atom economy. Okay, so what I'm looking for is the mass of desired products over our mass of reactants. Okay, do a little bit of sums, make sure that you were doing our multiples in here. So the thing that I'm trying to produce because it says iron can be produced so this is my mass of desired so it's four times 55.8 okay my mass of reactants is everything over here so I'm going to do two times 159.6 uh, plus uh, two three times sorry 12 okay um, so what's that work out as that's 223.2 and I've got 319.2 plus 36 on my scribbly calculations down here, which gives me 0 0.628. Multiply that by 100 to get it up to it being a percentage. And the answer is B. Okay, question 80. 
100 centimetres cubed of propane mixed with 600 centimetres cubed of oxygen. It's ignited. At the end of the reaction, total volume of gas would be. Okay, right, for a start, I'm just going to get rid of water so I don't even look at it because it's not a gas. Uh, C3H8, and then we've got 5O2, and then we've got 3CO2, just to pull out the gases and nothing else. Okay. Right, I have a hundred of this. I don't even have to bother with the centimetres cubed. I can stick that in at the end. I can use the slight moles. Okay, so 100 of that would need 500 of this. You had 600, so we're okay. Okay, what will happen is this will completely combust and I will have some left over. Because I had in 600, I used up 500, so therefore I'm left with 100. Okay, so let me just get rid of that as a number. Okay, so this 100 is going to be completely used up, but it's also going to decide how far you can go because it was a limiting factor. So my 100 gets completely used and will produce 300 over here. So my total, add these up, is 100 plus my 300 gives me 400. Okay. Question 19. Two-step reaction. <clears throat> A goes to B goes to C. First step gives you a yield of 60%. Second step is a yield of 90. Overall yield would be. Okay, you can sit and do this with real numbers if it makes you feel better, but I think it's pretty, I think it's pretty easy as long as you just make it a decimal. Okay, so step one, A to B gave you a 60% yield. That's 0.6. Step two, B to C, gave you a 90% yield of your 0.6. So just multiply that by 0.9 because that's 90%. And that will give you 0 0.54, and that's 54%. Okay. Question 20. Okay, the volume of hydrogen gas given off against time when an as excess of zinc lumps is added to 100 centimetres cubed of one molar hydrochloric. Which of the following graphs would show the volume of hydrogen gas given off when an excess of zinc powder was added to 50 centimetres cubed of one molar hydrochloric? So I'm just going to try and get them... Ah, it's not perfect. Can't get it to sit where it should. We're going to have to live with that down a little bit. Okay, right, so let's look to see what's changed. Okay, right, this says lumps. <laughs> Can't really read it perfectly, but okay, we've changed from zinc lumps to zinc powder. That's important. What that means is this graph is going to get sharper. Okay, we're going to get a, a faster initial reaction. So, so I'm looking for speedy. So let's get rid of these two. Okay, because these two are doing the same thing as the original. Okay, and then the other thing we've changed, we had 100 centimetres cubed of one molar, and now we've got 50 centimetres cubed of one molar. So I have halved the hydrochloric kind of reactant that I have available. Remember, it was an excess of the lumps and the powder, so that's got nothing to do with how far it goes. It's the hydrochloric that decides how far it goes. So what that means is that I'm going to go fast, but I'm only going to get half the distance. Okay, so I'm looking for C. Question 21. Consider the reaction pathway shown below. According to Hess's law, what are we doing? Okay, so let's go. We are looking for B. Okay, so let's get to B. So to get to B, I am going to go along here, down here, and back that way. Okay, so I'm going with E, so that's fine, so it's just going to be E. But I'm going against C, I'm going the opposite direction, so I'm going to go a minus C. And I'm going against D, so I'm going to be a minus D. So it's A minus C minus D. There we go. Okay, question 22. Which of the following is not a factor that affects the rate of a reaction? Okay, so we're looking for something that doesn't change the speed that a reaction can run at. Okay, so I expect you to know these. It's, I don't think it's excessively difficult. This is collision theory, which you've done for quite a few years. Okay, um, so if things are happening and collisions are taking place, then the kinetic energy of the reactant molecules obviously must be involved in that because the faster they're moving, uh, the more likely they are to bounce into one another and they're more likely to have enough energy for them to actually do the reaction. Okay. In the same way, the activation energy has a massive impact on rate because if that's really high, then that will mean that there's less and less chance of a successful 
collision, whereas if it's low, then it will speed it up. So that's definitely involved as well. Concentration of reactants, you should straight up know that affects the number of collisions. Not that. Enthalpy of reaction is not to do with the rate. It is just describing the reaction pathway. Okay, so D. 23. In which the following reactions would the yield of product be increased by lowering the pressure? Okay, so this is Le Chatelier. What we're saying is um, we're looking for increased yield of product. So that means we need to go, oh, we need to go this way. Okay, we need to shift it to the right. And what we need to do, therefore, is for the minimization of disruption, the way it wants to go, is to go to the right. So lowering the pressure. So if I lower the pressure, what it will try to do is to increase the number of moles of gas available. So that means I need to have more moles of gas on this side. Okay, I need more moles of gas. Oh, more moles of gas on the product size, and I need less moles of gas over here. And then you just do your do your working. Okay, so A, we've got two on this side, two on that side. Well, that's pressure's not actually going to do anything to that. B, I've got three on this side and two on that side. Well, no, if I increase uh, lower pressure, then it's going to increase to B. So no, sorry, B to the the reactant side. And then we've got one on the left hand side and two on the right hand side. That would work. Okay, and just check. For D, we've got three on the left and two, one on the right, sorry, not two. Um, so again, it would favour going back the way. Question 24. The graph shows the distribution of kinetic energies for a reaction involving two gases. Which graph would show the effect of increasing temperature? Okay, I'll just move it down a little bit so we can see everything. Okay, increasing temperature. So for a start, are we happy that we need to get rid of C? Okay, the reason we need to get rid of th C is C has shifted the activation energy. Temperature does not change the activation energy, the requirement that is there. What it does is move how much energy the molecules have, the actual particles inside the sample. Okay, so what we're looking for, if an increasing temperature, is for the curve to move to the right. We want it to shift up. We want more molecules to have higher levels of kinetic energy. So... Basically, it's not this one and it's not this one. It's definitely that one. Okay. Right, last question in the paper. Not the nicest, actually, I have to say. I did a fair amount of diddling here. Okay, alkenes react with ozone to form ozonoids. Ozonides, yes. Uh, which can be decomposed to give carbonyl compounds. Okay, so we've got a little diagram. Which of the following alkenes would produce a mixture of ethanol and propanone? Okay, it taught you through what I did here. Okay, so what I did first of all was I drew out, so I was absolutely sure, ethanol, here we go, and propanone. Right, and then I put those in the format that we have up here. Okay, so I was, so I said, right, okay, so my, that's my C double bond O is here. I've got an H coming down the way and a CH3 up the top. Okay, and this one, would have my C double bond O, so I've had to kind of flip it right the way over, and I've got a CH3 coming up the way and a CH3 coming down the way. Okay, so this this is what what I'm making. And then all I did was re-establish back to here. So all I need to do is just cut out that oxygen here and make that back to being a double bond. So when I do that, coming over to the right here to, to show, okay, so I've got my CCH3 with my H, double bond carbon and then I've got a CH3 up here and a CH3 up here down here sorry and you can write that several different ways now they've and they have done it several different ways you've got a kind of mixture between a kind of shortened structural and full structural with that bond so I've got CH3 C H double bond to a carbon and then I've got a branch of a CH3 and then another CH3, which when we look at it means that I'm looking at D. Several different ways you could do it. I think that's the most logical way. I find it easier to write down what they're looking for and then reorientate that to what they've given us a structure. Okay, end of the paper. Well, the multiple choice bit of it anyway.